Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, and welcome back to the weekly workshop series here at Master Effects Training. So this week I want to talk about brushes. Brushes are, of course, a big key part of working in Photoshop, and mastering them can certainly yield you a lot of different types of effects. And this one is a technique I actually had done in uh, my last book, the Photoshop um, for Designers Badass Effects book. And some of you might remember it. I took a ticket stub or a movie ticket stub and then made a brush out of it and then did this cool thing with a photograph and everything. So I wanted to revisit that and just show you how you can get creative with just random images and then taking a photo and then applying this brush effect to it and get something really cool really fast. That's the whole point here is you can get something really interesting really, really quick. So let's jump right into it. First thing we need is a photograph. So here you want to look for a subject that has got a, lot of, a good a bit of contrast uh, around the features of the subject. Like here you got, you've got very good contrast around the eyes and the nose. Very striking uh, where we can get that detail because we are going to be creating a luminance-based selection and ultimately a, a luminance-based mask in order to create this effect. So the, more, the, the better the contrast, um, the more contrast, the better. And of course you want to make sure that the subject is on a relatively simple background. Now in this case we're actually going to be closing in on the face of the subject a little bit more, so we're actually going to be losing the background. But if you were trying this on an image that had a really chaotic and high contrast background, it's probably not going to look as good because you just got too much going on. So just keep that in mind as you're searching for a subject for this. So this is the subject we're going to use here. Now in order to, for our brush element, I actually did a Google image search uh, on some newspaper clippings. I wanted to try something different with a newspaper clipping. This also falls in line with something I had seen on Pinterest uh, with some really cool kind of scatter brush effect. And I just did a Google image search and found this. There's no real reason to this one here. I just found it. It looks kind of cool. You know, it's got the little headline and a little bit of block of text. And it's got the, actually the newsprint texture and everything like that. And you notice it's actually showing the text on the backside kind of bleeding through the paper there. That actually is kind of a cool, um, going to give us a kind of a cool result in the end. So let's go ahead and take that image open it up in Photoshop here and let's go ahead and start processing this to create a brush. Now when you're creating a brush you remember you the darkest areas the black areas will be the most uh, opaque and then gray areas will have some transparency and then white will be completely transparent altogether. So I want to make some adjustments to the contrast of this image before we convert it to a brush. So let's go ahead and bring up my levels. Let's press command or control L and I'm just going to actually increase the, the dark areas a little bit just by pushing this in. And I'm going to take my highlight slider and push that in too. Now, I don't want to go too far. I mean, normally I would probably just go sh push it all the way in until the white is, is completely whites out the background altogether. However, I do want to keep some of those letters that are bleeding through there. That actually has kind of a unique characteristic of the newspaper. So I want to keep some of that in there. I do want to lose this harsh edge though. So you notice the edge of the paper there and everything there. I just want to push that in to get rid of that but do keep some of that text there. And even those little creases here at the top there. Normally I'd probably paint those out, but I actually do like them in this case. It's actually gonna add more to the brush itself. Now, because of that, I'm gonna push up my, uh, the dark area a little bit more there. There we go. All right, so go ahead and click okay there. And certainly try this with almost anything. Um, using a newspaper clipping here, if you're doing a, maybe you're doing an image or a portrait of an author, a book author, you can actually take clippings of their book, you know, like paragraphs out of their book, and make a brush out of that, and then just kind of build the portrait based on that. So there's a lot of really cool things to experiment with once you, uh, once you get the technique down. All right, so now I've got that processed. We're ready to convert it to a brush. So go to the Edit menu, and go down here and define Brush Preset, and we'll just call it Newspaper... <clears throat> brush one. There we go. I know I get really, really creative with my brush names, but now you can see it's already taking the shape of that brush there. And if we just started painting, we'll get that kind of uh, uh, something's happening there. So we got the brush defined. So now let's bring up our subject image once more. Now this I want to actually bring into another working document to build my final design into. So let's go ahead and uh, press command and control N. We'll do a new document. And I'm just going to make this 1500 pixels wide by 2000 pixels tall, make it a kind of vertical poster format. And we'll go ahead and click OK. There we go. So now let's go ahead and bring our subject image. I'm just going to drag and drop. You can copy and paste or whatever you prefer doing. 
And I'm just going to grab that and just hold down the shift key and drag and drop it over and it'll land right there in the middle. And that's actually pretty good positioning because I, I did want to get closer in on the face here. And I don't want to lose the hand there. So I'm just going to maybe scale it up a little bit or maybe scale it down rather. And there we go. A little something like that. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to bring out my layers panel. And what I want to do here is actually create, a, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, a luminance mask. We want to make a luminance-based selection and then create a, a layer mask on a new layer based on that luminance selection. So go into, let's actually bring out our channels panel as well. So you want to have your layers and channels palette out here. And when you look at the channels palette, you'll see that it's got the, uh, the RGB composite channel at the top and the red, green, and blue individual channels down here. Always when you're making a luminance-based selection, it, it's a good idea to look at the individual channels as well as the composite image. You want to see which one's giving you the best contrast for the selection. Now, in this case, I noticed that green has a good, great deal more contrast in certain areas where it's revealing a lot more detail versus what you would see in the final composite. So we're going to use the green channel to make our selection. So we're just simply hold down the command, uh, command key or control key and just click right on the thumbnail. And that is going to load the luminance of that, that channel as an active selection. You'll notice that some areas are deselected and other areas are not. So now, <clears throat> in our layers panel, I'm going to make a new layer. Just click the new layer icon. And then down here, we're going to hold down the option key or alt key if you're on Windows as you click the layer mask icon here at the bottom of the layers panel. What that's going to do is apply that active selection. It's going to turn it into a layer mask and then it's going to invert it. You'll notice it's revealing in areas like the background and the, uh, the, uh, the detail areas of the eye. In fact, if I option click right on the layer mask itself, we can reveal it here in the main window. And you'll see that because it's a layer mask, it's going to reveal where the white and gray, uh, light gray areas are and not reveal where the black areas are. So we're looking at basically a negative, and that's going to reveal when we paint in these areas that are light. Uh, uh, ultimately, it's going to reveal our brush effect there. So I'm going to option click on that again. And now we're going to reselect the layer itself, the blank layer. Now, actually, let's, let's, be, uh, let's actually set up our brush before we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off those two layers. So let's just make a dummy layer for the moment so we can set up the behavior of our brush. We've already defined the brush, but now we want to uh, change the behavior of it. So I'm going to reselect the brush tool. Now, if I just brush now as it is, you'll see in its default setting, it's not very interesting. It's just giving me the straight, <clears throat> it's the same orientation. It's just slightly spaced out and it just doesn't look very interesting at all. So let's go and open up our brush options, brush settings here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is first activate shape dynamics. And you've seen me use a lot of different brush techniques where I go in here and I just move the size and do all these different things to change the various behaviors of the brush. Now in here, I am going to increase the size jitter quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to max out the size jitter on this one. Normally, I'd go in here and mess with the angle jitter, but I want to actually keep this graphic looking, you know, straight up and down, or I don't want to have any angled looks like that. That's just a scattered mess like that. So we're going to leave the angle jitter alone, but I am going to go down here and turn on flip X and flip Y jitter. Now what's what that's going to do is going to randomize in fact, if I space it out here, you can see it's just randomizing the orientation of it. So it's just ro rotating it around as I paint. It's giving me a randomization to it. That's, that's looking a little bit more interesting than it was before. So that's not bad there. I'm going to actually undo here and actually do a Command-A, Select All, and Delete. <clears throat> and I want to activate Scatter. We're going to give it a little bit of scattering here. Not too much here. I'm going to do one in both axes, and we'll just give us a little bit more randomization to it. And then I'm also going to activate transfer. And notice here I'm going to set the opacity jitter to about 50%. Not using the pen pressure in this case because I just want to keep it consistent. But notice it's going to give me a little bit more random uh, variation of tone there. So notice some areas are darker and others are lighter. So that's that. So that's all we're going to do with the brush. Be sure, I mean, of course you can experiment with, try different uh, configurations with the brush, but that is that. So now, Back in our image, I'm going to reactivate or turn back on my working layer here. Make sure you have the layer itself selected and not the layer mask. I've made that mistake. I still don't make that mistake all too many times today where I start painting on a layer and it takes a minute for me to realize I'm, I'm painting on the layer mask 
and not the layer itself. So be sure you have the layer itself highlighted. Now I'm just going to leave my brush black for the sake of demonstration here, but we can change the color in just a minute. But I'm going to use my brackets just to size the brush down a little bit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start painting. Now, <clears throat> what you want to do is start in the areas where the, you need the heaviest detail, like the eyes and the nose and the mouth and everything like that. So notice here, I'm just going to keep painting here, and you'll start to see the eye start to take shape as you paint. I'm just building the effect up, and I'm using my bracket key to just kind of keep the brush size at a random, just kind of lowering it and raising it as I go here. So we're just revealing these various properties of the subject here. We'll go down here and make the brush a little bit bigger. So notice we can make out the features and shapes of our subject based on that layer mask. It's only revealing in the lighter areas where we see the detail and everything like that. And this is, you don't want to get too crazy. Notice I'm making the brush bigger here and we're just going to kind of fill that in there. But this is where you can get really creative with where the, the size and the randomization of it and everything. And I'm actually going to make my brush a little bit smaller. Let's just kind of paint in this eye a little bit more. Build that eye density up a little bit more there. There we go. Maybe even in the mouth here. But again, like I say, don't go too crazy with it because eventually it's just going to be a, a giant mess. So you want to get uh, be very uh, sparing about the uh, how much you, uh, you paint in there. Now, once you have that effect in there, you can, uh, of course, play with different colors. You could put a texture underneath it and everything like that. In fact, if you, if you did like I did and painted with black and then you decide, oh, darn it, I wanted it to be blue. So... You don't have to go back and repaint everything because if you you might get it where you painted, you know, every configuration is going to be different because you're just kind of freehand painting this. So if you like the configuration, just like the transparency of that layer and just do another color fill. So I'm just going to option delete. I'm just going to try different colors here and you can just get a different look altogether. You can, of course, start with a color on the brush when you're painting. But just know that you can go ahead and change that just by locking the transparency and, uh, and doing that. Now, one thing, last thing I want to show you, I'm going to go back. I'm actually going to do this back to a darker blue. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And just, actually, at this point, you could pretty much be done. You could just do a little bit of tweaking and adding a few more of those random elements in there. In fact, I want to show a little bit more of the hand here. Whoop, not even on the right layer. There, there we go. Just do that. Unlock the transparency again. There we go. Okay. But now on this new layer above it that doesn't have the layer mask, I'm using the same brush, but I'm sizing it up quite a bit. And I'm just going to kind of dab around the image here and just kind of almost kind of flood it where you're almost losing the image altogether. But I'm going to go back here and add a layer mask on that layer. <clears throat> and then let's go in here and use my gradient tool. I'm just going to use a radial gradient here and just kind of mask out the area where the face is and where the, you know, various features of our subject are. Then I'm going to reselect that layer and I'm going to go to here and do a blur. You've seen me use this technique before and this is going to create uh, an interesting sense of depth in the image. Even though it's made up of all these random particles that our brush is made up of. And now you can see it just adds a little something to the overall look. And I can actually scale that up maybe a little bit. And if you want, dial down the, uh, the layer opacity so it's not as overbearing in that foreground there. There we go. And there we have it. So again, this was just taking a simple newspaper clipping, just a random image I found on doing a Google image search, and then just turning it into a brush and using this uh, luminance-based uh, mask technique um, to create something very, very interesting. So again, like I say, try it with different subjects. It's one of those things where you're, you, you, you play with it and you're like, oh man, I want to try it on this. So try it on different subjects and try different types of brushes. And it doesn't have to be blocks of text. It could be a certain type of texture or a, you know, a logo element or just even just type. I've actually done a little bit of a, a, a kind of a word cloud turn that into a brush and then uh, apply this effect to it that way as well. So certainly has a lot of different options and um, hope you have fun playing around with it. So that is this week's uh, episode of the weekly workshop series here at Master Effects Training. Hope you guys enjoy it and we'll see you next time. I'm Corey Barker. Take care.